The expert says Egypt's position on GERD has nothing to do with hydrotechnical engineering. Hello and thank you for joining us on EBC World with the news. I'm Tabitha John to stay with us. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has sent New Year greetings to the global community, expressing his well wishes for the year 2024. Quote unquote, I wish a happy new year to all our international friends and partners as we join the global community in celebrating this special occasion, stated the Prime Minister. Many countries around the world have already entered the new year on Monday and have been met with warm welcomes. The Sakota Declaration 2015 Performance Evaluation, 2016 Plan Approval and Food System Transformation Promotion Senior Leadership Forum was held today. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Zemeka Makunin, Minister of Health, Dr. Lia Taddesa, Regional Heads of State, Regional Heads of Agriculture and Federal Ministers participated in the forum. Implementation of the food system expansion phase of the Sakota Declaration in 2014 has saved more more than 59,000 children from hunger and more than 2,000 children from death in 240 districts. From 2016 to 2018, by expanding this program in 700 districts, it was pointed out that everyone's cooperation is needed to save more than 5 million children from being cut off. It was disclosed that regions, city administrations and partners should provide financial support to implement established implementation plans. According to Xinhua, the year 2023 marked a significant deepening of the partnership between China and Ethiopia. The two countries achieved fruitful results in diplomatic exchanges, high-level cooperation, capacity building, knowledge transfer, and people-to-people -people ties. In October, Ethiopia and China announced the elevation of their partnership to an all-weather strategic level during Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's visit to Beijing. Experts noted that the comprehensive ties between the two nations resulted in multifaceted and mutually beneficial socioeconomic outcomes. Both countries demonstrated commitments to cooperate in realizing China's proposed Belt and Road Initiative, the Global Security Initiative, and the Global Development Initiative.
welcome back. You're watching EBC World. Ethiopia, along with other five new member countries, officially joined the BRICS, the emerging markets bloc of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa today on Monday. Ethiopia, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, and Iran were invited to join the group in August 2023 after the 15th BRIC summit in Johannesburg, South Africa. Tigas Sarnisa brings us up to speed. BRICS, an intergovernmental organization comprising Brazil, Russia, China, South Africa, and the newly joining members, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates have been invited to join as full members, effective of the 1st of January 2024. We have decided to invite the Argentine Republic, the Arab Republic of Egypt, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates to become full members of BRICS. The membership will take effect from the 1st of January 2024. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed in his speech back in August stressed that Ethiopia's membership to BRICS would contribute significantly to realizing regional cooperation. In joining hands with the BRICS, Ethiopia aspires to build BRICS, foster understanding, and work towards a shared future that benefits all. As I reiterate my gratitude to you once again, Mr. President, let me conclude by reaffirming Ethiopia's commitment to further enhancing multilateralism towards inclusivity. More than 40 countries have expressed interest in joining BRICS. Of these, six countries have made the criteria to become members. Ethiopia's BRICS membership could be taken as one of the biggest diplomatic victories of the country recorded in the last few decades. Analysts believe that the expanded economic bloc can change how things operate in international finance. And finally, energy expert slams Egypt's allegation on Ethiopian Renaissance Dam as baseless political maneuvering and undermining hydropower engineering concerns. The Global Energy Association expert, Mikhail Alamu, has urged Ethiopia to shift its focus to the power distribution lines issue as the construction of the dam now nears completion. Goshu Meliso has more from the Ethiopian News Agency. Negotiation is for the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam guard between Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan have been going on for decades. But unfortunately, the trilateral negotiations have not yielded any effective results. Talking to Ethiopian news agency, the Global Energy Association expert Mikhail Alamo said, lack of genuine approach from Egypt's side over the negotiation has resulted divergence. There is very little surprise that it's uh, almost impossible for them to reach the agreement. And the latter, the reason why it's not possible is because this is very conveniently a uh, hot issue for, um, for Egypt, first of all. Both countries have no, uh, no, not, no incentive to get closer to the agreement. No one needs that agreement. Uh, Egypt doesn't need that agreement. The experts stress that Egypt's argument that the dam would affect the water flowing to the Iberian countries is baseless and unscientific. There is not much danger that uh, GERD can bring to Egypt. Uh, it, it's, it's a little bit crazy for Ethiopia to like stop water flowing to Egypt. What we will do with this water? It will flood uh, Tana, it will flood everything. It will just kill people, destroy the living. And for what? Just to do a bad thing to Egypt? Stupid. No one is doing that. Mikhail Ferzer said the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam doesn't have technical problems. Rather, Egypt's argument is politically maneuvering. The political situation in Egypt calls for like outside enemy. It's very nice to have outside enemy when your uh, politics are troubled. Of course, like the hydrotechnical uh, complicated and expensive hydrotechnical dam is good thing for the downstream because it regulates the, uh, the flow of the river. 
The expert urged Ethiopia to focus on the power distribution lines issue as the construction of the dam needs completion. Well, dear viewers, that's all we had for this hour's news edition. I'm Tabitha John. Thank you for watching. Happy New Year to those who celebrate.